G'day guys, today we're going to build a new expansion pipe for the BT100. Now this is different to the last one in that the target RPM we've raised at 1000 RPM to 8000, whereas the last pipe was 7000. And also I was speaking to Luke over on Backyard Performance and he was saying you need a much bigger belly than what this pipe calculator um, produces. So to do that we've had to massage the port diameter numbers and that expanded the belly by about uh, 10 centimeters or so. So we're going to see how that goes. It's obviously going to be mismatched now because that's not the port diameters and everything else is going to be slightly out of whack. But uh, that's the whole point of testing. So we'll get started on this pipe and then uh, we'll see how it goes in the dyno. Okay, so this app generates cone diameters and cone lengths. We're not rolling cones from the sheet steel. We're going to hydroform, so we need 2D shapes. So to convert this into a 2D um, dimension, we multiply it by one half of pi. And uh, the numbers are here for that. And I've also put the numbers for each length of each section on this little image here. So from there, we're going to uh, transpose that onto this aluminium TIG filler wire. And the reason why we're using TIG filler wire is it's nice and flexible. And we don't want a straight pipe. It needs to be able to bend around the bike frames and seat posts and whatnot. So we'll uh, put all these numbers on this here. Then we'll take it to the bike, bend it, and form it to the shape we sort of want. Then we'll uh, copy that onto the sheet steel make two copies of that, clean up all the edges, get rid of all the oxides, weld them together, and then inflate them with the pressure washer. So I'll go ahead and put the numbers onto this wire here and uh, see you in a bit. So this is what we've come up with. Uh, it fits the bike pretty well. That's almost the same curve and shape as the pipe that's on it now. It's important to know um, when you inflate these, any radiuses and bends will tighten up. You can put a piece of wood between them to stop that happening. And I think we're gonna try that on this one. So that curves pretty much where we want it now. So we're going to go ahead and copy this onto the sheet steel and make two copies of that and then we'll uh, get welding. And this is what it looks like in 2D. I had to freehand the uh, radiuses over there. That should be okay. Uh, and any of the sharp bends here, I've just put a small radius on those. Um, you'll see on the other pipe that I made, any sharp bends, when it expands, it puts a little kink there. So by rounding those off, that should uh, help eliminate that. And we've also got extra at the front and extra at the back. And that's just uh, so we make sure this forms the full diameter and likewise for the back, as well as somewhere to weld on the uh, inflation sort of bung where we're going to fill it up with a pressure washer. So I cut this out and then we'll uh, make a second one, stack those, weld them and inflate. Okay, so we've got our two pipes cut out. The second one is slightly larger, which was the plan. So I'll just clean these up, tack them together, and then run them along the belt sander, get them all the same size. Clean up all the oxides and rust on the sides, and then we'll start ticking together. And it looks like both halves of the pipe consume an entire disc, which isn't too bad, they're only a couple of dollars each. So we've TIG welded along this edge, we're getting better at it. And now it's time to inflate, so we'll uh, thread on the karcher fitting. And we'll inflate it. Let's see, how, let's see how that goes. kinks but uh, it's what it is and that radius is formed nicely so we'll That might do it. I can always just uh, tap that round with a hammer. That's a little sharper than I expected. Probably because of this brick. But, uh, we'll 
see how it fits on the bike. So here's the finished product. Not ideal with these kinks here, but that shouldn't affect it too much. The uh, port diameter is spot on, and so is the stinger. So I'm happy with that. And the curves are nice and smooth. There's no uh, creases around the radius. So I guess the next video you'll see will be this on the BT100. Um, seeing how much power we make on the dyno.